Hey, what's up my chemistry people? It is Mr. Boylan. And today, what in the heck are we gonna do in this video? Such a great question. Always look forward to it every night. In this video, we're going to qualitatively describe the relationship between charged particles using Coulomb's law. Now, Coulomb was pretty cool. He was also the bomb. So they just decided to call him Coulomb. I'm cool, that's for sure. Okay, so really two things you need to take away from this video today. First, you have to be able to explain what happens to the energy of attraction or repulsion between charged particles as the magnitude or the size of those charged particles increases or decreases. And two, you have to explain what happens to the energy of attraction or repulsion between charged particles as the dis distance between those charged particles increases or decreases. Now, we're gonna start the year with Coulomb's law, really a law that governs all things in chemistry. And if you can apply Coulomb's law to all the other topics that we discuss throughout the year, you have a really solid understanding of what's going on at the molecular level. And that's cool, and it's also the bomb, which is why it's Coulomb's law. Woo, okay, so what is Coulomb's law? It is this fundamental understanding that a lot of us really already understand if we have ever played with magnets. But it's one that you're gonna apply throughout this unit and through future units that explains the electrostatic attraction and repulsion. And since everything is made up of charges, this law applies to just about everything we're gonna do. It's often referred to as the inverse square law. Now, as you take a look at your screen in your notes, you are given Coulomb's law, as you'll probably use it in physics, as it's related to force. And there's a constant K in there, and it's a little crazy. You can see the square of the, of the distance there, R, which is where we get the inverse square law. But in chemistry, uh, we are really going to focus not so much on force as much as we are on energy of attraction or repulsion between those charged particles. So we're going to talk about atomic structure, the attraction and repulsion of protons and electrons. We're also going to talk about ionization energy, energy required to remove electrons from the attractive pull of those protons, lattice energy, etc. So we're going to tweak Coulomb's law a little bit because we again are just going to look at qualitatively what's going on. You will never actually have to perform a calculation. So we perform a little calculus and we end up solving Coulomb's law equation for energy. And again, since we're not doing any calculations, we can just simplify that equation to tell us that the energy of attraction repulsion is proportional to the product of the charges over the distance between those charges. In other words, the energy is directly proportional to the charge and directly proportional to one over the distance or inversely proportional to that distance. So here is the nitty gritty. Here's what you need to walk away with. The larger the charge is, the larger the energy of attraction, if those charges are opposite charges, or energy of repulsion if they're like charges. And as you think about that formula for Coulomb's law, if those charges in your numerator are larger and larger numbers, as the numerator gets larger and larger, energy of attraction or repulsion is gonna get larger as well. Again, just think of it like a fraction. When that numerator gets bigger, boom, energy's bigger. Two, the smaller the distance between the particles, the larger the energy of attraction, if opposite charges, or energy of repulsion, if like charges. Again, our distance value is in the denominator, so as that value gets smaller, the more attracted they will be to one another, or the energy of repulsion will be stronger. So again, as you think about Coulomb's law, it boils down to the larger the charges, the larger the energy of attraction and repulsion, the smaller the distance between those charges, the larger the energy of attraction and repulsion. Okay, so take a quick look at some of the guided practice then. You're asked to think about and compare what's going on with the energy of attraction between these two charged particles versus the energy of attraction between these charged particles. Now again, we don't actually have to quantitatively solve we just should recognize that here, positive charge is larger and is therefore going to exert a stronger energy of attraction on this negative charge than we would find here. Larger charges, stronger energy of attraction or repulsion, in this case, attraction. Okay, now let's compare the charges in A with the charges in C. If you take a moment to look at A and look at C, notice this time, that the values of the charges are the same. So our numerator is staying the same. This time, notice, the distance here is much smaller 
than the distance here between these charged particles. So comparing these two, the energy of attraction in A is going to be far stronger than the energy of attraction in C, just because they're closer together. Now in this example, as we look to compare A and D, now this time, notice that they are the same distance from one another, but now we've got opposite charges here and like charges here. Assuming they're the same magnitude, they will attract and repel with the same energy, but again, it'll be attraction here of those opposite charges, repulsion with those like charges. Okay, and that sums it up, Coulomb's law, we're gonna use it throughout the entire year. Never gonna have to actually solve for it, come up with a numerical value, but you do want to understand that relationship between the magnitude of the charges and the distance between those charges. Boom, and we are done. Check out the references beneath the video and have a fantastic day.